Hey, hello everyone and welcome to Extreme Graphics Tech and today I am going to be testing GeForce Now. And the fact is that many years ago I tested when the service came out, but many things have changed ever since. So I wanted to do a, is it worth it in 2024? And in this case it's the G4 Now service. I am not a huge fan of streaming. I prefer to play all my games locally, but I understand that not everybody is, you know, wants to have a PC or want the investment that that means. So let's check how GeForce Now is working. As you know, GeForce Now is a streaming service offered by Nvidia that depending on the tier you want, because there is even a free tier, okay, it will offer different settings and qualities. For example, the normal tier, the free tier is only 1080p and will a 60 FPS and it will only allow you to play for uh, 60 minutes. After that, you have to log out, log in again, and play again. While the two pay uh, services uh, vary in quality depending on the service that you're paying. For example, the normal one or the premium. The normal allows you to play up to six hours, continue hours. It doesn't mean that you are going to stop playing after six hours and you cannot play anymore for that month. It's just that you have to log out and log in in case there is queues that it can happen, but very rarely. So um, you have to log out and log in. While um, the premium service, you have eight hours. On the uh, normal service, you have up to 1080p 60 fps and on the premium service you, you have up to 4k and 120 fps because the uh, gpu that you will be using is an rtx 4080 the service costs around 200 dollars a year the premium service and i think around 80 dollars a year uh, or uh, uh, the normal service so there, there, there there's some caveats on how this system works. So when you log into the service, you are going to have access to the games you already have. There is no included games or subscriptions or anything like that that will allow you to um, log in and play games on NVIDIA GeForce. You have to already have the... The, the games, it can be with a Game Pass or anything like that. So there are like four main services that at the moment are supported, which are Steam, Xbox Game Pass, the Ubisoft games, and the GOG games. Those are the uh, four services that are supported by um, the NVIDIA GeForce Now system. So you, you don't have anything when you log in and you use the app, and we are going to see all of this, and I'm going to explain everything when we uh, when, when I start um, the video um, with all the comparisons and etc. to show you. But I just want to let you know that uh, this is only to play games. And all you're going to see is a list of games. Not all games are available, unfortunately, even if they are on Steam, like for example, the Sony games like Spider-Man or God of War, they are not available on GeForce now because Sony doesn't want their games to be on this uh, on the system. So that's important for you to understand because not all games are going to be there. Uh, the same as, for example, you may have a game on GOG that is also available on Steam. And so if the game is repeated on different services, you will have the option to select, right? But sometimes some games are not going to be, for example, Cuphead. Head, I have it on GOG and I cannot play it on G4 now. It's available on the uh, Steam, but I cannot use it because I don't have it on Steam. So I can I cannot play Cuphead on G4 now. So that's a very important distinction you have to make. So uh, not all games are going to be available, but there is a lot of game to choose from. So let's see all the testing, all my conclu and then I'm coming with my conclusions. As you can see. The games are ordered by a, a company, by um, service, by genre. And so there is different ways. And this is the uh, browser version of the app. However, when you start it, when you start, you can see on top that they are recommending me to download the app. So that's what I'm going to do. Download the app because, well, you know, to give the best chances. They said to recommend to download it. I did. So when you download it, you you see I'm logged in and now it tells you a couple of things in there. And that's what I started to do. Then I started to uh, look for a game that I wanted to test, which was a Plague Tale Requiem. There was the game. And when you click on it, it gives you the different stores that you can use to play the game. And then you uh, click get. Uh, it takes me to buy the game on the Microsoft Store because I have not connected my account to the GeForce Now app. As you can see, it doesn't know what games I have or don't have. So I click on connect your app and then you have Ubisoft, Epic Game, Steam and Xbox, right? So it's in here where you're going to be connecting your apps. For that, you're going to click on 
connect and do uh, the connection of the Xbox app. However, there are some options in here that you can have, like the streaming quality, the quality of, uh, you know, you can have automatically unbalanced or something, but I, I prefer to set everything to max just to be sure that I was giving the best opportunity to the uh, uh, app and to be sure that the streaming was going to work uh, as good as possible. So I started changing some of the options. Do you have, you can see there that there are resolution upscaling technologies, AI enhance, enhance the standard, and you can select some of them. I didn't select them because I wanted just to test the standard resolution, just to not give any differences that were could be due to AI um, or something like that. That option that is called in-game configuration setting is to allow you to change the settings in the games, okay? That's important. Well, anyway, once you get to the Connect app, you uh, get there, you put your details, you do everything that you're supposed to, you know, your password, your two-factor authentication, whatever it is that you need, and then your account is connected. As you can see, now it's connected. And now I go to the Steam account, I do the exact same. And those are the two only accounts that I care. Now you may be thinking, where are the GOG games? We are going to be talking about that a little bit later. So as you can see here, well, we have already everything connected, everything set up in the way I want to. And now I'm going to the games again. And now I'm going to be looking for a Plague Tale Wrecking again. And there it is. But now it says uh, when I got there to play the game. You see, now I can play it directly from there. So I click play and it starts analyzing the network, doing some changes, some connections, some things, I guess, to select what's the best server or something like that. I'm not quite sure what it does here, but it started doing this. And then once it's connected, it starts loading the game, which essentially means that I think it's installing the game for your session. I don't know if it's going to be doing this every time I start the game, if I, you know, uh, killed the game and started again. I didn't test that to be honest now that I'm thinking about, but well, anyway, the loading is quite fast. All considered, even if it's installing the game, it's doing it quite fast. Then it's going to ask you for your uh, uh, details again. I connect my Microsoft account and then it starts to synchronize my save, my save game for my Windows account. So I have everything as I am playing on my computer locally without any issues whatsoever. As you can see here, it's syncing my um, save games. Okay, so you see now the game starts. Now other options on, on the interface and other things that this has is that you can see there is some options in here about your account and so on and then also like a game session diagnostic report which is going to tell you how well it went on the game that you were playing. Also here you can do a network test that is going to tell you um, if the server you selected and what's the situation with that and if you, it's good for you. So you can test different servers. For example, as you can see here, I'm running the uh, server and license and then I get uh, uh, it measure more than 75, how much it requires and how much it recommends. Then the packet loss and then the latency. And on all of them, you can see that I, I'm well above the recommended setting. So that's very good to ensure that we're going to get the best quality possible for the test that we are going to be running here. So once you, we are here, now we have the, the, all the connected game. It knows what games you have because you have the accounts connected. So that's good. And as you can see, it's very, very simple. You can use any game pad that you want. If you have it connected, it will work. In here, you can see that it's telling me that I don't have this game. So I'm going to delete it. Why? Because I think I played this game while it was supported on GOG, but now it's not and I have that game on GOG and not on Steam, so I remove it from the list of games that I had because I tested GeForce now many years ago and uh, it remembered my account and it remembered that I had the Cuphead game. So that's why it was showing there, but it's no longer on GOG. Another option you have here, as you can see, is the GeForce Now um, layer that you can use that is for um, like the gallery to change some options that, uh, that we were changing before. You can do it in game, not all of them, because for example, you cannot change resolution or uh, frames, um, FPS, I mean, but you can change uh, some of the different uh, settings that the game has. 
from here. Well, not the game, but the overlay that GeForce NVIDIA has. You can change it from there, like recording a video or something like that. It will tell you the session, how long you still have on your session. Remember on the premium is eight hours at a time, then it will kick you out and you can get in back again. This is mostly for um, ensure that if there is a queue, you give chance to others. So in this case, you have the different upscale models. As you can see, you can change it there. I leave it always on a standard. That's what we're playing. You can not change things like VRR, Reflex, or the type of VSync, but you can change other options like Control V to be able to, uh, or the type of keyboard you have, where you want the display to be shown. Like here, for example, heads up display and all of that. You say where you want, but the thing that we are more interested about is on the statistics because this is quite good you see you not only get the frames or the stream frames per second you also get the game frame per second now in terms of latency i don't have a professional way to measure this so all i did here was to record a 240 fps um gameplay uh, of the game uh, of this area here on the menu and i'm just moving uh, or clicking the button and seeing how long it takes for the option to move on the screen. I have to say that for me, it was instant. I can, if you can um, count here, it's very, very fast from the moment you hear the click of the button, which sounds very weird, to the moment you see that moving is very fast, even at 240 FPS record that is going at 30 FPS in here on a 60 FPS container. So th there is a lot of things m around moving there, uh, making things complicated, but I can tell you that, um, well, you can have an idea if you understand what I'm doing here of how much latency you can expect while playing this sort of uh, games. And from my point of view, latency was not an issue. It was essentially instant. One thing I have noticed is when a game has filled grain that the video compression has more problems. As you can see here, there is a lot of like a shimmering and trembling in the image when we, there is grain active. So as you can see here, when we deactivate the fine grain, I, be, I think that the image looks better. And it's important because compression is hard on grain. And so as you can see here, the image is more stable, less shimmery. So it's important to eliminate grain on any game that allows you to, because I believe it's going to look um, much better than it is doing it now because um, the, this is very hard to do even for movie studios. So compressing uh, grain on the fly is not very easy. Okay, now so to do image quality comparisons, I am going to be testing games where I can do the exact same on both sides. And in this case, it's a Playtale Requiem that has been set up as 4K on both uh, devices on native locally on my computer and also on GeForce Now with the exact same settings. I have recorded both so we can make comparison. Both have been recorded at the best quality possible. Uh, in order for um, they avoid any compression issues. However, of course, YouTube is going to uh, make them uh, worse. Uh, but okay, let's see. So uh, this, let's see this area here. So just starting, we can see that the image quality is it is better on locally, of course. But the uh, image is not very different. Uh, when we uh, on the GeForce Now video, where always video has some issues is with darker areas. They tend to um, smudge a little bit, giving the whole image more of a softer image. If you uh, check some areas like under the bridge, for example, if we get close like here, you can see that the video does look really different and not as good, right? And it's the same for these areas where we are losing some of the details and also here for the sheep, as you can see. However, many other areas look uh, quite decent and quite good. And we are going to be checking this when we move. For example, here, you can see that if we even get close to this, you're going to see that the image looks a almost the same on both situations. We lose some details, of course, some more of the grind, fine detail. But when we look at this as a whole, all we are going to notice is like a softer image, not so much of a loss of detail uh, or as much areas, but like a softer, like the, the resolution is not right 4K. Uh, but of course we know this is because of the compression, but even so, I think it looks quite, quite good. Look here, for example, okay? So if we do this, even on fine details like these um, bushes here, look, 
it looks quite good. We are losing some of the detail, the very fine detail. And I have removed grain, if you're asking me. And the reason for that is I'm going to show it later, okay? But here you can see, for example, what I mean. If you see here, we are losing some of that granular fine detail that the texture has. You see that little detail? There is missing because the video, of course, is not good enough. The bitrate, even at 75 megabits per second, is not good enough to make this look good. But at a normal distance, it's hard to really pinpoint exactly what is missing, except that the image seems to be softer. So um, in general here, while we keep looking at this intro, we are going to be looking at two or three different games. Um, uh, different scenarios, uh, sorry, you, you can see that the image that GeForce now is providing is a little bit softer, but in general it's quite, quite comparable depending on the situation. Look, I, I think it looks really, really good in these areas. Look, for example, um, let's see here. You can see even, do you see the details there? Look, even in this area, we are losing some and we get some um, a micro blocking here in darker areas, but they are not so egregious when we look at them from distance. And this is what I'm saying, you see, because the image tends to be soft. So you can see this here. Look at the colors, how they are resolved. They're not resolving the fine detail. But when we make this looks at this distance, it's hard to notice those details, especially in movement, you see, because there is like this light shaft moving there. So it's quite hard unless we are doing this sort of uh, side by side comparisons. That doesn't mean there is not and that a native um, lo playing locally isn't obviously better. But what I'm trying to say is that when, while we're playing, honestly, it's sort of hard to get exactly what's going on and what the, where the problem could be and also depend on the nature because as I said where is there is like uh, bright colors uh, the this sort of problems tends to not be as obvious so it also depends a lot on the type of content I imagine that a game like that space is probably going to cost more than one headache to um, this software and I think Nvidia should you know allow for more bitrate to be used now we are here in full gameplay mode. I don't have this exactly synchronized, but I think we are close enough. And as you can see here, even details as this can be, you know, resolved quite good when we are sort of close to them. Even if we go to like distance area, look, the house looks quite comparable. There is a lot of lights and even this movement of the trees, the important part is that it's not causing like macro blocking or anything. And you can see that it's hard to see any sort of difference except in this area where everything gets darker and some of the details get lost in there. The problem is if you look at it, look, it's hard to really see anything bad going on here while we are looking at a distance that is normal gameplay and not zooming like crazy. Of course, I have to zoom in to show you the difference, but as you can see, it's quite good. Let's see, for example, this one. There is movement everywhere. There is everything going on. And even then, the images are quite quite good and comparable in many areas. Look at this. When we get very close, we have the motion blur here and we have good motion blur here. And what I don't see is like super macro blocking, or macro blocking or anything like that. It looks quite clean, all things considered, with, uh, which is, the, you know, the zooming that we are doing. So, okay, let's go here and keep seeing. So as you see, okay, I think the image is honestly excellent, all things considered. And it's got to be, it's, it probably will be improving over time while we, uh, while the game, you know, keeps um, evolving and the bit rates get higher and so on. I think the service will improve in image quality anyway. Okay, continuing with the Playtale Requiem, I have the intro and I have selected this because there is a lot of fine details and uh, elements in the image that I think are quite um difficult for the encoder to work with and however here you can see that they are that is still looking really 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 good look at this and look at that look at this and look at that 
So as you can see, the image is hard to notice. Yes, we can pinpoint some areas if we zoom in. For example, over here, you can see that there is lots of grain and fine detail. The image doesn't have grain, have disabled the option. But when we move to this, you can see that it's cleaning up that area and making just as much or a much as much, more as much than it, it will normally be. So you can see here, you see how the details are lost there? Okay, and that's, yes, that's unfortunate, but still, when we look at a normal, it's much more harder to notice those details in there because also there is movement, there is a lot of going on, so it's not easy um, and to spot those sort of problems because even here, look at this tree in movement, okay, and look, it's hard to spot. This is probably not as good as this, but it's hard to say because it's all, you know, motion blur and so on, so in movement, it's almost impossible to notice the difference and the good thing as i said is that even though this is you know a little bit softer there is no macro blocking which is the main problem when we play with this that's very noticeable and from here it's just impossible to notice can you notice anything weird while this is a movement i, I don't think you can this i don't know why this video causes this issue but let's uh, uh, move it a little bit uh, further I don't know what's happening here. Oh, there is a lot of movement here, which is good because as you can see, we can once again see that even on fast, rapid and a lot of movement on the screen, the encoder doesn't get destroyed, which is a very good for what we're trying to do here. You see, honestly, the image is quite good. I'm not going to say perfect or spotless because obviously it's better to play locally. That's for sure. But I don't think the image difference is that high, to be honest. It's, look, this When you look at them side by side, it looks so good in movement that it's honestly hard to pinpoint any problems with the image, except when you stop and look exactly for what you know is going to be the problem, which is more granular, fine detail. So let's keep going and look because there is a particular area where we can pinpoint some details here, for example, um, there is nothing that you can say that, you know, will make the image look bad. Look at this and look at this. So, you know, it's a very busy area that is moving, that is moving. So, you know, by not being macro blocking or anything, we are not having any big issues. However, that doesn't mean the image is perfect. For example, here, if we get close, it looks quite good, but a little bit softer. That's part of the problem with the video. That's the image always gets softer when we, uh, in general, but that, there is also other little bits of problems here. For example, look at this background. You can see that there. Normally you wouldn't mind too much, but if we move this, you can see that some of the details on the background are being completely as much by the, um, the, the video compression. You see here how we are losing those details in there. And also if we see this pine tree here, you're going to see that the details we get here on native are as much here. You see, we're losing some of the details. Yes, that's why it's going to never be fine. But honestly, in movement, I don't think that many people are going to notice this difference so much, especially when you're concentrated on a specific part of the image. So I will say that this looks still, that it looks very, very good. And now let's go and explain something about what's important. Okay, and the last game I'm going to be testing for uh, visual image quality is Dying Light 2. If you thought you were going to be safe today for Dying Light 2, the answer is no. Here it is. And, you know, a first look at a normal distance, we can see that both images are quite, quite similar in terms of image quality, as I said always. It depends a lot on how you're looking because when you start zooming in, of course, you're going to be see, you can see here, how this loses some details, okay? You see, More, those fine granular details are lost when we do that. You see, it gets a little bit smooch, but not that much. But when we get this distance, I don't think anyone is going to notice any difference. Now, as for frame rate, you can see that yes, it's quite similar. I have a 1490, so yes, it's going to be a little bit better. But as you can see here, look at that graph. The image is essentially or almost the same with the 4080. So you can see here uh, that both images are extremely similar. They look really, really good. Look at that. You know, um, one side is obviously softer than the other in some areas. You see some details lost, but I still think they both look really, really, really good. Okay, for some reason, 
this does just some time wanted to go back let me find okay so these areas like this you see where you know the attention is drawn toward the fronts the image quality is like like there is the background and sort of things like here you see this how is lost some of the detail however when we get out like this and we move well, it's also that there is a little bit of like smoke in there. So that may be the, the reason, so like, like some heat effect. Okay, but this this part here, yeah, there is a big difference here. And this is one of the areas that I found that there is a lot more difference than any other area that I've tested. Look at this and look at this area around here. So when we move this, look how much clearer the image become for the background stuff. And that is because of the kind of colorish, grayish, blackish that is trying to represent, uh, generate this sort of issue. If we get close to it, you can see here the details. We can kind of see them, it looks clear. But when we start moving, look how much it gets. Some of this area really starts to disappear. Here you see the happy face, doesn't look as good. Okay, um, at a distance, I will say is also noticeable. Look and look. So that's one of the areas that I found from the game that honestly look the like the worst part of it. It's like it wasn't that great compared to other. Oh, but it, I mean, it's not bad because look at this. For example, look at the background here. Look at this area. Look at all this bright area. It looks really, really, really good. Right. However, if we get very close, we are going to see that there, yes, there is still more detail in the native image, but it's a detail that is hard to actually see. Look at this area here. The details are a little bit lost, but look. So at this distance, it's hard to say that how much quality we're losing. Okay, because you know you have to have like a perfect eyesight and everything to really be able to see that difference in those areas. Because this is another example that I found, right? So here on top, these windows, these panels look, you know, like you know, th th there is not so much difference when we do this, right? It's hard to spot any difference. Where if we get really close we can see there is clearly a difference and the native or the local image looks much better and more detailed. But you're never going to be playing with the image that close. It's on this distance that the image is supposed to be and it's at this distance uh, or this normal resolution that it looks the best. So I I honestly think this, this looks quite, quite good. All things considered, the, I don't think anyone will be complaining. There could be cases or extreme cases or a situation like a Death Space games or, you know, some sort of very dark game that, um, I, I don't know. I don't know why it does this. Let me go back. Um, it's just, I would just want to show this little, 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 little bit here. Okay. You see, other than, Let's get close, pumpkins. You see, you can read on both. Yes, there is more detail on the um, native one. It's darker because it's probably a little bit behind. It's still loading. Um, but yeah, so th there you go. Um, visual quality, I don't know. What I think is that it looks really, really good, but I am not sure. What do you think about the image quality? Anyway, we have some other tests to do, and then I will come with my conclusions. Now before, we were talking about GOG, and here is how it plays. So you select a game like Cyberpunk, and it gives you the option to, for GOG. Not every game has this, okay? But anyway, you can uh, you select GOG, and then you say play. And at this point, you see, you have to get and, and play. So at the point of uh, you uh, hit play, it's going to load the game, and then it's going to ask you for your account. So it doesn't connect. It's more like a verification every time you launch a game. Is the way it seems to work. So you put your email and password, and then the game uh, is going to launch, no problems whatsoever, and you're going to be playing the game no matter uh, in a matter of seconds. So now, as you can see here, well, the game is running very good, no problems. It looks beautiful, RTX 4080, great trace, and everything. And as you can see, well, it seems a little bit choppy, but that may be the configuration settings. So let's look at the settings for a second. Okay. So this is the 
part where I said that that options in, in the settings uh, outside allows you to see these sort of things, the configuration. As you can see here, we can change it because we activated that. So I'm going to use overdrive and I'm going to uh, use DLSS on performance. As you see, you have every option as you were playing on any normal PC. Now, it seems a little bit better. So I, I'm not sure what configuration it was before. Maybe it was native, but it seems a little bit better. And I know the gameplay is very smooth and, and you can enjoy this game in this quality, which will cost you an arm and a leg, while here you only have to pay um, for the month or the year or whatever time you want to use it. And the image is quite good. But then I had another doubt. I was thinking, okay, let's see. If I activate frame generation, am I going to get a better performance or a smooth experience? And you probably cannot see this on the video because it's a 60 FPS. But the moment I activate the frame generation, I felt the difference immediately. The game felt smoother and I couldn't see any glitch or any problems whatsoever. So this is working as intended and it's working very good, at least for this game. We know the overdrive is very heavy. And if you want to have that extra smoothness, you do need to activate that. So now here I'm playing Dying Light 2 and I was looking for like dark places, you know, those places tend to cause issues uh, that we showed before and uh, we look at. And here, for example, in this tunnel, it looks perfectly good. No issues whatsoever. Remember, we were looking for those problems in the e comparison, but here uh, while playing, I think the image looks quite good. Now, Yoke Lele, more than for image quality, I wanted to test the latency to see if I could feel anything because this is a game that needs precision. Okay, and honestly, I was able to play the game perfectly fine. I couldn't feel anything weird or anything, you know, like, oh, I missed the jump because I pressed the button a little bit too late. For example, here I fell, but it's because I didn't know what I was supposed to do. The moment they told me that I should, to, I was supposed to roll and jump, I was able to do the jump immediately with no issues, as you can see there. So I think that's very important. Now, Doom Eternal, this felt amazing. This game's look at that. I have the uh, statistic activated there, and you can see that it's running at more than 300 frames, but the stream is running at 120 FPS. I have only around 17 milliseconds of ping, zero frame, zero frame loss, zero packet loss. The bandwidth, uh, you can see the total bandwidth available for me and how much I'm being used at the moment. So I will never even close to saturate my connection, the resolution and the type of connection I have. So this, believe me, looked amazing and it felt really, really good. And as you can see, even on a fast paced game like this, I never found that the uh, compression or anything was a problem or caused any issues whatsoever. As you can see, the codec, by the way, is AV1. So, well, as you saw, I think uh, GeForce Now is probably the best streaming service at the moment for my money. I am not in love with streaming services, but if I had to because there is no other way, I think GeForce Now is the way I will go. To begin with, the games are not tied to the GeForce account or NVIDIA or anything. They are my games that I have on different platforms that I can play. Yes, not all of them are there, which is a shame, but this list is going to be growing and growing and growing until everybody probably uses. Then in terms of value, if you think about it, the premium service costs you $200 a year. A 4080 costs $1,000, just the GPU. That means that you have essentially five years cover if you of service for the cost of one GPU. And the thing you have to understand is that this is going to get updated over time. So probably by next year, we're going to be using the five uh, the 5080 instead of the 4080. And then in two more years, you're probably going to be using the 6080 instead of the 4080. So that means that in the same period that your GPU 4080 will get, you know, a value, uh, get the value in, in price, you're going to get upgrades by paying the same or maybe a little bit more. I don't know if they're going to up the price, but still in that terms, it's very good value, especially because we are talking about only GPU cost. We are not talking about the whole PC. And I would say a PC like that will cost you around $2,000. Dollars. So if you're thinking about it, this is 10 years worth of PC that is always going to be up to date that you don't have to spend all in one uh, in one moment. OK, video quality, which is the other problem that normally, uh, you know, I don't like a streaming service. We saw the comparisons and I think, yes, it's not perfect, but it's very close. 
is very close from my money, especially at a normal distance and a normal gameplay. Yes, you are going to see that the image is a little bit softer. There is a little issues here and there, but compared to other systems that I have tested, it's the one that I never saw like big macro blockings or big issues. Um, it was always very smooth, very nice, and the image quality was quite decent compared to many other streaming services. Even in fast movements, we saw that the quality was very good. And that's because Nvidia is using AV1 as a way to stream. And that's very good because uh, AV1 is the latest codec and that is the one that is going to give you the best quality when it's, you know, fast encoding. So in that sense, it's very good. But I think if we want to be closer to local, we will need to up the bit rate probably to 150 to 200 megabits, which for many people is not doable. I have a one gigabit connection, but not everybody has that. So I suppose that's uh, part of the issue. But even so, I think it looks quite decent. Now, in terms of input lag, which is the other problem that many people, you know, uh, feel, especially me in some games, I have to say in all the games I tested, Doom Eternal, Ukulele, and so on, I could not feel it at all. I'm not lying. Um, there may be compared to playing local and some frames that you're missing, but while playing on the, um, the service, I could not, honest to God, feel any input lag. I never felt like I pressed the button too late or that it didn't respond immediately. So I don't know what to say. You know, I can do all the measures you want and maybe take, you know, like people do frame by frame and so on. And I'm sure those uh, details are true. But the point is those measurements doesn't help when if my feelings are completely different. And my feelings are I was I felt like I was playing locally. Honest to God, it was just like I couldn't feel it. So in that term, I think this does an amazing job. Of course, if you were playing other type of games, maybe, you know, competitive, that little or to no frame, two, three frames can make a different combat games or something like that may, make, uh, could make a difference. But on the games I tested, um, uh, I tested many of them. I just showed with some of, you, uh, of them to you. I could not feel any of this. Maybe because I'm not that expert, I'm not so pro or something, but in my level of gaming, it was absolutely a delight. So as you can see, from my point of view, GeForce Now is really a very, very good service where the only caveats I can find so far is obviously that the uh, uh, catalog of games is limited in terms, not that it, they, do, they don't have a lot of games in there, but there are lots of games that you have that you're probably not going to be able to play, at least not yet, like the Sony games, like God of War, Spider-Man, so on, for example. There are other games that are not available, or maybe you have them in another platform, like could be the Electronic Arts platform that is not available inside this. So there are some issues, there are some problems when we talk about this, but in general, I think this is quite a good service. The price, I think, is fair, all considering the sort of hardware you're being given, and the image quality is one of the best, if not the best that I have tested yet. So from my point of view, if you like streaming or you don't want to invest on a supercomputer, but you still want to have those nice 120 FPS and nice quality, GeForce Now is quite a serious contender. Think about this, my 4090 could have covered me probably for the next six or seven years of service on GeForce Now, and I, you know, and I will be having the next iteration of GPUs, while if I want the 5090 or even the 5080, I will have to spend another 15 to $1,600 again. Uh, when you think about it, so the service is, is really good, I think. So for my money, I would recommend anyone to like streaming GeForce Now because the, the proposition is good. The games are yours. You don't have to buy the games on their platform or pay a subscription for gaming or anything like that. There are your games that you can play anywhere else that you can play on a computer if you buy it later or anything like that. So my recommendation would be for you to pay for one day test. That is, that's what I did. Pay for one day test on the premium service. Test everything as much as you can and see if the uh, service is for you. I think many people are going to be very, very surprised. Thank you very much, and as always, see you on the next video.